His Excellency, Minister of the International Department of the Communist Party of China. I had the pleasure of meeting His Excellency last month during my visit to China for the 5th Pakistan-China Foreign Minister Strategic Dialogue. We held fruitful discussions on issues of mutual interest. I was extremely impressed by His Excellency the Minister insights into regional and international developments and their profound impact on Pakistan-China relations. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, during our meeting, I also invited His, His Excellency uh, the Minister to visit Pakistan and I'm delighted that uh, he graciously accepted my invitation, giving us an opportunity to extend to him a rich hospitality and welcome and special warmth that we reserve, we reserve for our Chinese brethren. Minister Liu's presence in Pakistan demonstrates the consensus of our two countries' leadership to maintain high-level exchanges and deepen strategic mutual trust. I am confident that his visit will further strengthen the enduring bonds of fraternity, trust and cooperation between our two great nations. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the joint consultative mechanism of political parties under CPAC is a unique platform reinforcing two key messages about Pakistan-China relationship. The first, the CPAC constitutes a vital pillar of our bilateral economic and strategic partnership. Second, that there is complete unanimity among all political parties of Pakistan on CPEC's salience for Pakistan's economic growth and sustainable development. Thank you. Excellencies, CPEC is not merely a symbol of Pakistan-China friendship. It is shining emblem of a new vision for international cooperation. Founded and nurtured on the concept of win-win partnership, CPEC has catalyzed Pakistan's endeavors towards sustainable development, socio-economic prosperity, and regional connectivity. We are proud that we are the first country where China launched the Belt and Road Initiative in 2013 under the great leadership of President Xi Jinping. I have fond memories of welcoming President Xi in 2015 and His, His Excellency in Pakistan when our two countries formally launched the CPAC and signed a record number of MOUs and agreements to mark a new era in Pakistan-China bilateral economic cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, being a part of the team that launched and navigated the CPAC through half of its first phase, I must take a moment here to acknowledge China's critical support to Pakistan through investments in the infrastructure and energy projects of CPAC. These investments came at a time when Pakistan was struggling to find support from other international development partners and financial institutions. Excellencies, through CPAC, we were able to steer Pakistan to a period of significant economic growth. We overcame power outages, expanded our roads and highways network, developed Pakistan's first mass transit system, and generated hundreds of thousands of new employment opportunities for our people in Pakistan. Excellencies, the government, the, the political parties, and the people of Pakistan will never forget China's support in those crucial times. Now we are witnessing the high-quality development of CPAC Phase Two. In this regard, the Prime Minister's recent visit to China was significant on several accounts. First, it saw our two countries' leadership renewing consensus on the upgradation of CPAC. Second, the visit was marked by landmark decisions and understandings between the two sides, close to two dozen bilateral G2G documents and a substantial number of B2B MOUs and agreements were signed in this visit. Third, we launched a groundbreaking initiative that forges joint ventures and partnerships for investments in Pakistan, key priority investment sectors. Fourth, we signed the modalities of third-party participation in CPAC projects, unveiling a new horizon for regional connectivity, economic integration, and prospects of shared prosperity in the new era. Ladies and gentlemen, to launch the second generation of CPAC projects, 
we are prioritizing industry, modern agriculture, information technology, and mining and minerals. Together with this, we are committed to further enhance people-to-people -people linkages to deepen the sentiments of mutual respect, trust, and understanding. The convening of today's forum, the participation of Pakistan's all major political parties, and the presence of Honorable Minister from China is a manifestation of our shared commitment to preserve and protect the Pakistan-China relationship from the vagaries of national, regional, and international politics. Ladies and gentlemen, today marks an important occasion as this is the first time that this new mechanism is being hosted in Pakistan. On this auspicious occasion, I congratulate all my colleagues representing various political parties of Pakistan in today's event. Let us join our voices and collectively pledge our strongest support to the CPAC and its upgradation to the next phase. Excellencies, our unequivocal and unwavering commitment to China-Pakistan Economic Corridor promises a lasting benefit for the present and future of our people. I wish to recall here the famous quote of our founding father, Qaid Adam Muhammad Ali Jinnah, who said, with faith, discipline, and selfless devotion to duty, there is nothing worthwhile that you cannot achieve. Let us be guided by these words to strengthen Pakistan-China relations and ensure the full realization of CPAC. Let us reaffirm today that Pakistan-China friendship is a relationship of the past, the present, and the future. A friendship is historic reality and the conscious choice of our two people of China and Pakistan. We have stood by each other in weal and woe through thick and thin, evolving our friendship into an all-weather strategic cooperative partnership. Our strategic trust is unshakable and nothing can undo it. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am confident that the discussions and deliberations today will further fortify the CPAC and Pakistan-China Iron Brotherhood. Long live Pakistan-China friendship. Thank you uh, very much. Ayaz Sadiq, Honorable Chairman Yusuf Raza Girani, Your C. Shakta, Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of Pakistan, His Excellency Ambassador Jiang Zedong from China, representatives of political parties, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank my colleague, my friend, the Foreign Minister, for your invitation uh, for me to visit this country. And this is a long dream. Well, seven-year dream that comes true. So, and today it is a great pleasure to join you at the China-Pakistan Political Parties Forum and the third meeting of China-Pakistan Economic Corridor Political Parties Joint Consultation Mechanism for a discussion on China-Pakistan cooperation and friendship. Two weeks ago, Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif paid a very successful visit to China. During his visit, General Secretary and President Xi Jinping and other Chinese leaders had a candid and in-depth exchange of views with him on China-Pakistan relations as well as the international and regional situations. Broad consensus has been reached about China-Pakistan all-weather strategic cooperative partnership, practical cooperation across the board, and global and regional issues of common interest. My visit today is to follow through on the important consensus between the leaders of our two countries and move forward the bilateral relations together with the government, political parties, and other sectors of Pakistan. The determination of our leaders to strengthen the all-weather strategic cooperative partnership sends out a clear political signal to the rest of the world that China-Pakistan friendship is unbreakable. Viewing the bilateral relationship as a priority in each other's foreign relations, China and Pakistan have reaffirmed strong mutual support on issues concerning each other's core interests and major concerns and agreed to continue 
viewing this relationship from a strategic height and a long-term perspective, work together to safeguard regional peace, stability, development, and prosperity, and accelerate the building of an even stronger China-Pakistan community with a shared future in the new era. This offers strategic guidance on the future development of China-Pakistan relations. As we speak, changes unseen in a century are unfolding at a very fast pace. The world has entered a new period of turbulence and transformation. China and Pakistan are both at a critical stage of development and rejuvenation. China is moving faster to develop new quality, quality productive forces and advance its modernization drive. The new Pakistani government has introduced the Five E's framework focusing on five priority areas to boost development and reform. These policies and endeavors of both countries present important opportunities for our peoples. China and Pakistan enjoy a solid foundation and a bright prospect of synergizing development strategies and strengthening mutually beneficial cooperation. During Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif's visit, the two countries signed 23 agreements covering cooperation on CPEC, infrastructure, agriculture, and industrial development. We should take the signing of these agreements as an opportunity to upgrade China-Pakistan practical cooperation and bring about desirable changes, such as boosting Pakistan's capacity for independent growth, attracting more third parties to join China-Pakistan bilateral cooperation, and improving security on the ground through growth. Ladies and gentlemen, Party-to-party -party relationship is an integral part of the overall China-Pakistan relations. The close interactions and mutual support between the Communist Party of China and the Pakistani political parties over the years have significantly enhanced the political trust, practical cooperation, and mutual learning on governance between now two countries. Leaders of the two countries have already drawn up a blueprint for stronger bilateral cooperation. It is time for us political parties to contribute our wisdom and strength to turn the blueprint into reality as we have done in the past. To enhance cooperation, the two countries need to first understand and appreciate each other's development philosophy. Political parties should thus do more work to facilitate exchanges on governance philosophies and practices and set the conditions for the two countries to better align our national development strategies. We should also take the initiative to create more platforms for China-Pakistan practical cooperation, especially at the sub-national level and for enterprises. In a turbulent world of rising uncertainties, stability within the country is essential for the development of that country. Faced with complex internal and external challenges, Pakistan is navigating carefully through turbulent rivers and treacherous shoals. Only when all political parties in the country join hands to ensure political and social stability can there be sustainable development? And for all these years, China has always been striving hard to maintain a good balance of reform, development, and stability. Each of the three fundamentals is indispensable. It is with the wholehearted support of the people that China and Pakistan have become, become Iron friends. Popular support is the bedrock of China Pakistan relationship, 
which remains as firm and stable as mountains and rivers. However, the mutual understanding and affinity between our two peoples is still not as commensurate with the ironclad nature of our friendship as we would hope to see. In particular, there is a there's a rising risk of Western social media, which has huge impact on the younger generation, eroding the foundation of China-Pakistan friendship. Under such circumstances, we are ready to work with Pakistani political parties to promote exchanges between the youth, media, think tanks, academia, and local governments, and help the general public, especially the young people, better understand each other so as to pass on China-Pakistan friendship to future generations. To strengthen party-to-party -party exchanges, the International Department of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China, that is my department, will invite 300 representatives of Pakistan political parties to visit China on exchange programs in the next three years. And we are ready to hold the fourth meeting of China-Pakistan Economic Corridor political parties joint consultation mechanism together with the Pakistani side in 2026. To facilitate people-to-people -people exchanges, we'll invite outstanding young people and people from the media to visit China on a yearly basis, offer more scholarships to Pakistani political parties, and provide vocational training for young Pakistanis through the Silk Road Link platform. Ladies and gentlemen, CPEC is a flagship project that carries special significance. Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif published a signed article in the Global Times of China during his visit to China, noting that the modern day manifestation of China Pakistan relations is CPEC. When meeting with Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif, General Secretary and President Xi Jinping said that China is ready to work with Pakistan to jointly develop five major corridors for growth, better life, innovation, green development, and openness, with focus on building an upgraded version of CPEC so as to promote more substantive progress in the high-quality CPEC cooperation and help boost Pakistan's economic and social development. To this end, more efforts need to be made in the following aspects. First, we need to build a broad political consensus of support for CPEC. Over the past 10 plus years, guided by the principle of planning together, building together, and benefiting together, our two countries have made CPEC a successful project, which has greatly boosted Pakistan's development, benefited the Pakistani people, and facilitated China-Pakistan integrated development. China is determined to build the upgraded version of CPEC, and we are ready to follow it through with Pakistan in line with the agreed principles. Second, we need to improve security and the business environment. Security threats are the main hazards disturbing CPEC cooperation. As people often say, confidence is more precious than gold. In case of Pakistan, the primary factor shaking the confidence of Chinese investors is the security situation. Without security, the business environment um, cannot really uh, improve, which may in turn undermine the development in the long run. And we express our deep appreciation to the Pakistani police department and the governments and all the laws enforcement in tracing the criminal suspects that has so badly sabotaged 
the security situation here in Pakistan and also the Chinese business people here in Pakistan. And I'm sure that with the joint efforts, Pakistan will continue to be a destination for China's investors and also for cooperation uh, with the Chinese business people. Third, we need to build a corridor for better life to drum up public support. Since its launch, the CPAC has put people front and center and strive to benefit people in all corners of Pakistan. Over the years, it has greatly improved people's li livelihood and advanced the development of Balochistan and other Western regions. Yet, we are aware that people in different parts of the country have varied expectations for CPEC. Moreover, some feel they are left behind and haven't really benefited equally from CPEC cooperation. Together with the Pakistani government, we hope we will respond to the calls of people from across the Pakistan security uh, society, especially, especially those who live along the route of the corridor, and accelerate the building of a corridor for better life that will benefit more people. We, hope, we also hope that the Pakistani side can take action to garner more complex public support for CPC, for CPEC. Fourth, we need to build a favorable media environment through better communication. We are encouraged by the sincere support of the Pakistani people for CPEC and the positive coverage of mainstream media on CPEC. But there are also some jarring noises from time to time. Some external forces have been spreading mis disinformation to smear the project and erode its public support. We must take it seriously and try to create a CPEC-friendly media environment. Ladies and gentlemen, new commitments are needed to create new prospects. This year marks the 75th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China and the very first year of governance after the election of the new Pakistani government. At this critical juncture, we are ready to work with the political parties of Pakistan to actively implement the important consensus between our leaders, enhance exchanges on governance experience, and jointly promote CPEC cooperation. Dear friends, I would like to finish by citing some excerpts from an article written by a colleague of mine in the Chinese Foreign Ministry. The, the article is written in 2015, which goes, it was my first trip to Pakistan. It was mid-February, which is said to be the best season with evening breeze, scented with spring crowds, and the Karakoram Mountains glistening white with snow in the sunshine. But what is most unforgettable is the broad and bright smiles of Pakistan brothers and sisters. China and Pakistan are true friends, sharing will and foe, be it issues concerning each other's core interest, or crucial moments to uphold sovereignty and independence, be it support for economic and social development or assistance in the wake of natural disasters, China and Pakistan stand firmly together, come rain or shine. She says, the visionary poet of the East, Alama Muhammad Iqbal, recited decades ago, which goes, which means, well, I can't read really, really read in its uh, local language, but it means that Himalayan springs have begun spurting and the Chinese have begun to wake up from deep slumber. 
Today, China-Pakistan friendship is like the mountain spring, pure and clear, nourishing our people's hearts and linking them closely together. And in the community of shared destiny, China and Pakistan will always stand shoulder to shoulder to forge a stronger, deeper, and more solid all-weather strategic partnership of cooperation. And I believe what she says in 2015 is even true today. Chimpak Dosti Zinabat, Long Live China Pakistan Friendship. Thank you very much. تو آپ کو بتائیں کہ سی پیک ایک فلیگ شپ پروجیکٹ ہے لیو جیان چاؤ کی جانب سے یہ کہا گیا اور ان کی جانب سے یہ بھی کہا گیا کہ سی پیک میں سرمایہ کاری بہت ہی موضوع ہے سرمایہ کاری کے لیے سیکیورٹی صورتحال کو بہتر بنانا ہوگا لیو جیان چاؤ کی جانب سے یہ کہا گیا نائب وزیر اعظم اسحاق ڈار کا پاک چین میکینزم اجلاس سے خطاب ان کی جانب سے یہ کہا گیا کہ چینی وزیر اور وفد کو پاکستان میں خوش آمدید کہتے ہیں اسحاق ڈار کی جانب سے یہ بھی کہا گیا کہ سی پیک سے پاک چین دوستی مزید مستحکم ہوئی ہے نائب وزیر اعظم کی جانب سے یہ بھی کہا گیا کہ سی پیک پر پاکستان کی تمام سیاسی جماعتیں ایک پیج پر ہیں دورہ چین میں مختلف معاہدوں پر دستخط ہوئے دورہ چین میں وزیر لیو جیان چاؤ سے اہم ملاقات ہوئی سی پیک سے پاکستان میں ترقی اور روزگار کے مواقع پیدا ہوئے